it. So God bless all of you that will have an opportunity to view this message. It is a blessing to be able to communicate with you again by the grace of God to be able to speak the truth of God, to be able to speak as a ambassador of the truth of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to get in tonight, well, this morning, I would like to get into this morning the importance of trusting in the Lord. So um, the last communication I made through this means we briefly, and by briefly I mean maybe a minute and a half, we talked about why it's important to trust in the Lord. Um, if we were to look at man's look at man's um, reason as to why he fails to maintain fellowship with God. The reason why man falls out of fellowship with God is because of lack of trust. Lack of trust is what leads us into sin. We don't truly believe that God has our best interests at heart. We don't believe that being in the will of God is the safest place to be. We don't believe that God is promising to do good to us. He's promising to, to love us, to transform us, to change us, to make us into the type of people that can make the decisions that we are required to make and continue to make those decisions. We don't think that serving God is a real benefit. So we lose sight of the reason as to why we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. There's a lack of trust. We believe that we struggle with the belief that God is not going to God is not going to show himself as faithful, show himself as true, show himself as the way he did with the men of God throughout history, throughout the history of the word of God. We don't believe that God will show himself in the way that he did. And that's actually the very reason why the Lord said that although heaven and earth may pass away because he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, his word will not pass away because he knows that we need a reference. We need to be reminded of how he works with man, how he works with fellow man. So Jesus says in John 14, he says that we are to let not our heart be troubled. He knows that us waiting on his return, we still have to live. We have to carry this flesh. We have to fight against the desires of our flesh. We have to, to fight against the, the enemy who attacks us in our minds and our hearts. He wants to tempt us to, to not trust God. That was the very thing that happened in the beginning. We're going to get to that as well. But John 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled because I'm going to go, I, in my father's house, there are many mansions and I am going to go prepare a place for you. And because I'm going to prepare a place for you, he's saying, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to bring you and I'm going to receive you unto myself. And he said, he says that where I am, you may be also. And he says, and where I go, you know, in the way, you know. So he's saying, you know the way to the Father. You know the way to me because I've granted you access. But the lack of trust makes us forget that we have access to God through Jesus Christ. We have access to the love of God, to the truth of God, to the mercies of God, to the glory of God, to everything that God desires us to be and to have. We have access to that through Jesus. Jesus supplies what God demands. 
That's the awesome thing about Jesus is he has everything that we need to please the Father. As he pleased the Father, he also gives us his spirit. He gives us his nature. And he leads us and directs us and guides us, supports us, and comforts us throughout our walk as we walk with him. But as you see here in John 14, it says, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. But Thomas, in verse five of John 14, it says, Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not where you go is. How can we know the way? So Thomas feels like he doesn't know the way. He feels like he needs reassurance. And it's not uncommon for us as, as sons and daughters of God, as we serve God, to need reassurance. It's not uncommon because we struggle with unbelief and unbelief makes us see we makes us walk by what we see it makes us react to what we see we can't always detect or know what god is doing in the spirit we don't know what our obedience is storing up for us we don't know how our obedience is keeping us stable we don't know how our obedience is creating an atmosphere around us that is releasing the peace of god the love of God. It's bringing about transformation. It's inviting the glory of God. We can't see that at work. So when we don't see God at work in a way that our fractured and frail minds can understand, we will look to God for answers that we may not even really need. It's just a matter of us needing the affirmation and the assurance that comes from God. So Thomas says, how will we know the way? But Jesus just said in the previous verse, he says, the way you know. He said, the way, where I'm going, you know, and the way you know. Why is he saying that? He's saying, because you have me. And because you have me, you know where you're going. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. You know where you're going. As long as you, 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 you obey my voice, as long as you obey the spirit of God, you have access to me. You are going to have the power and the ability, because as I receive you unto myself, I've given you power to receive my name because now you are a son of God. So you have access to Father God and you have access to my voice, access to my direction. And that's supposed to instill trust. That's supposed to keep us stable in a sense that we trust God. Even when God is not explaining things to us, we have found trust and security in the presence of God. And the fact that God is always ensuring that if we don't know anything, there's always a prior instruction. There's always the, 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 the testimonies in our heart, the promises of God to go after. There's always aspects of God that he makes available that, that we are not supposed to feel separate from God. Now, when we sin, sin separates us from God. Sin creates a barrier Sin offends God. So sin is when we can feel God's silence and God's absence. But he's saying, Jesus says, you know the way. And then he said, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. If you have known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So he's saying, because you have walked with me, you have seen the Father. You have seen the Father at work because I have been at work on behalf of the Father. I am God in the flesh. So that was supposed to birth a level of trust in Thomas and in the rest of the disciples that was going to keep them walking with God until they received the outpour of the Spirit in Acts chapter 1. But man sometimes needs that affirmation. Man needs to know that God is still with him because after all, God is a spirit. And that's why he requires us. He says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's why we are born again in the water of the spirit because we are, when we are born again in the spirit, we are now taking on a higher form of existence. We are now able to engage God in greater ways because we are now more like him being in the spirit more than we are in the flesh. So the Bible says that we are to walk in the spirit. 
So trust is not just a, a remaining stationary and unmovable. It's, it's now you're to be unmovable and as far as it relates to abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain and you will be rewarded. So we're to be unmovable as it relates to our faith and our dedication and commitment to God. But we are not to be unmovable in a sense to where we are not productive for the Lord because faith is supposed to produce work. So we receive the grace, which is the power from God. Grace is what we get from God. And with that grace, that enables us with the power to have faith towards God that describes the taking on the, the walking in that power and exhibiting the personality of Jesus, which then is given back to the father. That's the storing of the, the treasures in heaven that the Bible talks about. So if we consider, as we're talking about man, real problem being the lack of trust, because there has to be something that brought about sin. Yes, we know sin is odious to God. It is when we forsake our identity and we act like rebels and criminals and we reject God's love and God's desire for us to do good and to do well as he's given us power to do so. So the, the root cause, one of the root causes of sin is lack of trust. We sin against God, we backslide, we leave the presence of God because we don't trust that what God is telling us to do is truly going to benefit us. We There's a part of us that knows that it pleases God to obey him, but then there's another part of our hearts, there's another part of us that thinks that obeying God is not going to come back to us. God's not going to reward that. He said, how the he said, how can you if you being he said, if you being who you are, know how to give good gifts to your children, how about me, the father? I'm paraphrasing it, but how about me, the father God in heaven, the, the creator, the builders, the sustainer of all things? How much more do you think I can bless you and do for you? If you know how to do for your kids, your natural kids, you as a natural person. So we lack trust. The curse in the garden put man in a condition where we struggle with trusting God. We struggle with believing in God. David said, he said, I would have fainted. If I have not believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So lack of faith, lack of belief in God, that, that, that breaks down your soul, your body, your heart in time. Like you begin to develop a very pessimistic, a very warped view of life. And this is why people are finding themselves subjected to things that are not real. Jesus said the world cannot receive the spirit of truth. He said, I give you the spirit of truth, but the world cannot receive that. So because people lack trust in God, they don't have access to the truth. They don't have access to the aspect of God that can really transform them into a whole person, a real person. So Eve, as the serpent is communicating with her, it says that she's seen that the fruit was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and that it was one to make one wise. So what is happening as she, her as she's considering what's happening here because the bible says in a day of adversity consider she's experiencing adversity in a sense that she's being confronted with her belief and that's what the enemy does he wants to he 
He wants to challenge your beliefs. He's going to challenge what you really believe by presenting things to you in hopes that you become a lower version of yourself and you abandon the voice of God, you forsake the spirit of God and you go towards your desire. You go towards what you're seeing, what you are smelling, what you're tasting, what you're touching, what you're hearing. And that's inconsistent with what God is trying to draw you towards. So she sees that the, the fruit is good for food, meaning that now it's, it's able to be consumed. It's not going to, she feels like it's not going to kill her. Then it's pleasant to the eye. So it's nice to look at. She's looking at it. She's considering it. Her eyes are, are communicating to her brain saying this, this actually seems like this could be beneficial. And she sees that it can make her wise. And she consents. And Adam also agrees with her. And we read that story at times not realizing that we too, in some way, shape, or form in our life, have played the role of Adam and Eve, where we, we've been faced with a decision. We've been faced with a opportunity to make, to choose God or choose the devil and we, we consent to what the enemy is saying because of our lack of trust. She, although she had access to everything that God wanted her to have access to, it still was, it still was an option for her that now this, this fruit is appealing to her. So lack of trust makes us evaluate. The lack of trust makes us feel like we have options. The lack of trust makes us want to be our own compass. It makes us want to be as gods. And it said that as they ate, they became gods and their eyes were open. So they illegally took on a nature that God was not instructing them or guiding them into. So sin alters the condition of man. Sin develops a mindset towards God. Uh, it, and it, the condition of man's heart grows hardened towards God because now he's made a decision that did not kill him. He's made a decision that He's made a decision that he thought was good. The Bible says that there's a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So lack of trust in God tells man that there is a way which seems right. David, David said in Psalms 2, he said, kiss the son lest you be angry and you perish from the way. And it talks about how his wrath works a little in the sin. And he says, blessed are those that put their trust in him, put their trust in the Lord. So when man confesses and forsakes his sin, and he now wants to follow Jesus. He now wants to walk with Jesus. Jesus wants a, he wants intimate, close fellowship so that man is not out there and not out in his world looking at things, doing things, getting distracted, being um, being lured by the devices of the enemy. He wants man to focus on him. You know, when he describes the kissing of the Lord, he's talking about coming into agreement. He's talking about a term of endearment. A, a, a act of, of honor and humility and submissiveness. And that's what we're called to do in our daily lives. Submit to God. When we submit to God, we can resist the devil. Submit to God means obedience. Full obedience. Confidence in God. Confidence in what God is doing 
in your midst. Confidence, confidence in the work that God is doing in you. Confidence in what God has said. Confidence in the will of God. So, as I mentioned that scripture, and I'm going to mention it again because it, it's such a important scripture in the word of God to consider is Proverbs 3, 5. Trusting in the Lord with all of our hearts and leaning not to our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge him. Prayer, worship, the word. However God is revealing to us that we are to engage him, we acknowledge him. That's an acknowledgement of him, acknowledging that he is and acknowledging that he is Lord. He is the king of glory. And he offers direction, instruction. So Jesus is, Jesus is inviting man to himself. That takes trust. It takes it takes trust to obey God. It takes trust to do what God says. It takes trust to want to do it God's way consistently, continuously. To do it God's way and to want to continue to do it God's way, that takes trust in God. It takes trust in God. And the Spirit of God is, is making himself available so that we can trust in God so that we won't fall into sin and condemnation the enemy wants us to sin so that we feel condemned so that we feel like man God's never going to forgive me for this wants you to feel like you can't approach God when it says that we are to approach the throne of grace boldly so that we may find mercy in the time of need. So Jesus is saying, draw near to him. Draw near and I will draw near to you. The enemy wants us to stay out there ignorant and in trouble and fearful and unbelieving and giving our and, and forming idolatry in our hearts and an insensitivity to the spirit of God. Because when man departs from God, it's because he's now more mindful of himself. As the Bible says the backslider has turned to his own ways. So that's really what that is. When we when we leave God, it's because we're trying to protect ourselves. We feel in danger. And it's true that lack of trust will make you feel that it's dangerous to serve God. You feel like your life is on the line. It feels like Jesus is putting more on you than you can bear. And the truth is, he is. He's putting more on you than he can bear so that he can show himself as strong. So that he can show the power of his might. So that he, so that you don't, we don't work a system, try to figure out God and try to control God because God is in control. Man, we feel safe with what we can control. We want control and we believe in what we can control. Jesus is saying, believe on me and I will give you control in my name. So Jesus has to reconstruct our minds because he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we are reconciling people back to the Father. As the Father is drawing people, the Spirit of God is drawing people by the, to the name of to Jesus, you and I, hopefully you, but we are desiring to be the kind of people that truly live in a way to where we have been called and chosen to that work and that we are committed to being faithful to that calling, to that purpose on our lives. But man will struggle with his identity. Man will struggle with who
who God is and who he is in God when he lacks trust. Man, we won't want to make the decisions that we need to make. We won't want to operate at the level that we are being called to. We won't believe what's being preached and what's being ministered to us. This is why people struggle with church attendance, why they struggle with church membership because they, they lack the trust in God. They think that the more they give to God, the less of themselves that they're going to have. And that's true. And you, you want that. You want to decrease so God can increase because Jesus, Jesus is trying to make you and I like him. He wants us to be partakers of his, of his divine nature. But that requires a, a consecrating. That requires a, a, a deliverance from ourselves. That requires of a denying of ourselves. That's the first thing that Jesus said. You have to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So the first part is you got to get, you got to deny yourself. So it takes trust to deny yourself because you are what you see. You're carrying, I, I'm carrying this body. I'm, I'm carrying this body. I have to get up. I have to walk around with this body. You have your body to carry. And it's easy because you can make decisions and move around in your world. You have some, we have some bit of control. It's easy to be, develop a trust in yourself when you have, became, when you think that you've made good decisions, we think that we've arrived and we think that we're somebody, it's easy to fight with God for superiority. It's easy to fight with God for position. Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, I have peace for you. You, you want to find it in the world. I don't, I'm not giving you peace like the world is giving I have real peace for you. I'm the prince of peace. And we are fighting with God in that. And it looks different on different levels, but people struggle with surrendering and committing their whole hearts to God. He says, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We struggle. That sounds very simple and profession, but practice is where there's a disconnect. A lot of things we profess. We know the Bible, we can quote things, and we feel really good about what we can profess about Jesus. But what's in practice, because there could be a difference between what people get from us when we talk and what they act, and what happens when they actually get close to us. When they get close to us, there's a contrasting difference in what we say versus what we do. So Jesus, the word of God is trying to make us not just hearers, doers. He wants us to be able to will and to do. And that takes the acknowledgement of the lack of trust. The acknowledgement that we don't trust God. And acknowledging that that's not a condition that we want to be in. And we know that we cannot serve God with that mindset. With a heart that fights with God. So, as we, as the Lord is pouring out His Spirit, as He is releasing the power to obey him in greater ways as he's granting access to those who he wants to serve him in greater capacities. It's important that we don't lack the trust that being with him is where we find joy, is where we find answers is where we find satisfaction. It's where life really is happening. So may we trust in the Lord because leaning to our own understanding is not going to end well for us. 
and we're going to find ourselves struggling with self. You'll be struggling with the ability to do what you're supposed to do. There's you knowing that you should do what you're supposed to do. And then there's the doing what you're supposed to do. And we will struggle in doing what we are supposed to do. We will struggle to follow the instructions that are set for us by those that, the, those that are placed in position to tell us what we should be doing. And even the things that the Lord is is ministering to our hearts and our minds and our personal time with him, we will struggle to make the necessary adjustments and changes because we don't trust that doing what God says takes us deeper into his love. We have to have a greater hunger and thirst for his righteousness to do what he's saying. So the spirit of God is is desiring to fill us so that we can function as sons of God as we so that we can endure so the Lord wants to fill us so that we can fulfill his will in the earth and for now and forevermore in Jesus name